Good afternoon if you're in Australia, 4 p.m. If you're in the UK, 7 a.m. If you're in LA or around that area, it's 11 p.m. Another live, had a live yesterday with Jeremy Green. That was really, really good. And uh, today I'm going to have a chat to I Choose Happy, which is uh, the lovely Emma coming on now. Um, there she is. Hello, Emma. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Oh, good evening, good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good e evening, afternoon. Yeah, we're 4 p.m. here. Your early morning. 7 a.m. You're looking very bright and chippy for, for chippy, chippa, isn't it? First thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, bright and breezy, yeah, yeah. I made the and what's effort. The what's the weather like in the UK today? Oh, it's still and grey. I'm, I'm really hoping that we get some sunshine, but it is, um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit grey. Yeah, look here, today was 24 and beautiful. Um, for those who follow the lives, I'm not, I'm usually at home and today I'm in the studio at work. So that's why I've got lots of Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, this thing here, which tells us about when to stop, when to go, when to be happy, you know, for behavioural, behavioural stuff. So I met Emma, go on, Emma, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, and the artwork's by one of your clients, isn't it? Who yeah, so every time actually, he comes in? Uh, he, yeah, every time he comes in. God, you've got a good memory. So, yes, uh, he downloads them and prints them and then colours one in every time he comes in, which is good. I've got a whole wall full, but I can't show you because I left my stand at home and I'm using one that I've had to stick together with gaffer tape this afternoon um, and I'm worried <laughs> it's going to fall over and I'm going to have to be like that. <laughs> No so, problem. Emma and I met, was it last year or the year before? Uh, last year. year before. Yeah. Was it last year when mm. you were doing the I Choose Happy podcast? Yeah. I think it was the year before. Yeah. Gosh, time flies. I know. And we haven't chatted, I don't think, for quite a while now. Probably, probably six months, maybe longer. Easily. Easily. Yeah. So you've put I Choose Happy podcast on hiatus at the moment so you're just taking a break from that yeah yeah I I do feel like I will definitely go back to it definitely because yeah. I really enjoy it um but the bit about it that I'm not comfortable with is the editing so yeah. um yeah I, I really like talking to people but uh, when it comes to putting it together and putting it out on air I just started to get a bit of um the, the ego thing oh my god what are you doing who's going to listen to this it sounds crap type thing so yeah but yeah I will come back to it and, and look people don't always listen you know some of the podcasts I put out have low numbers some have extremely high numbers some are in the middle so I guess it just depends what the topic is what people are thinking about that day if they really want to sit down and listen to something for half an hour to an hour um you know I don't think there's any set standard for a podcast I know people sell things that tell you how to run a podcast but i've found you know some podcasts everybody wants to listen to it other ones you know there's still a, a fair few but not as many as you'd hope you know especially yeah. topics like i i'm really i i'm i'd love to stop child abuse and a couple of those i did it didn't get as many listens as i thought and I, I think it's because it's that topic that people don't actually want to acknowledge that it's around you know, it's it's hard to go to that space in your brain and go, oh, God, this is what's really happening. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you still do I Choose Happy updates on here on Instagram? Not as many as I used to do. Um, and again, it's all sort of... Um, so Choosing Happy came about because I used to... My name used to be Daydream Believer. Um, yep. And I used to daydream a lot and you know um your name on things... instagram yeah 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 sorry yeah not my name yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> and i used to wish things were different all the time and then it just sort of like when covid hit and things like that it was just it was actually a meme and i think you shared this meme as well where there's two people sitting on a bus and the outlook is completely different so yeah. one person's looking at um gray rocks oh, and the other person's yeah. looking out on um on a sunset on, you know, a really nice, pretty view. 
And it was just like, oh my God, this is, it's down to me. I can do this. And, and I just yeah. instantly thought I choose happy. And like, and it was, it was like um, a bit overboard, but a bit of an epiphany almost. It was like, I, I, it, this is up to me. This is down to me to do it. So when I started making the changes in the way that I was thinking, I then really wanted to help other people. Um, yeah. And, and that's where it all, that, yeah, that's just where it all started. I choose happy and I wanted to help other people be able to find their happy as well and realize that like, even after, for me, it was over 40 years of having that negative mindset overruling, um, yeah. that now I live in such a way that it, it very rarely happens. It happens. Um, but as quick as that negativity comes in, it can be soon turned around. And look, you, so that's work where I started. In, you work in the health, health food, I was going to say, health field sector <laughs> anyway, don't you? You're, I do, you're yeah. a nurse. No, so I was a healthcare assistant yep. in a local surgery. Um, so yep. not quite a nurse, but in the nursing team. Um, yep. And absolutely loved my job. Really, really did. But never quite made it to the uh, through uni. Um, yep. And I've sort of always thought of myself as being a bit thick because of that but actually it's not the case um it just wasn't the right time for me um yeah. but something happened early like towards the back end of last year um and and now my career is changing and I'm going into hearing um so looking after Sorry? people's ears I'm hearing <laughs> <laughs> It's an old one. I, it's a good one. I fall for it every time, though. That's the thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, I like how you crazy. even pointed at your ear. Oh, yeah. 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 Cheers, Daniel. It's good, though. <laughs> look, I mean, that, look, happy, though. You know, uh, that's what I like about you is your outlook is so happy. And when we did the podcast, because I came on and did a podcast for you, um, you did. it was just really nice the way we chatted. And then I think we chatted a couple of weeks after that. We caught up and had a chat. Um, you know, and happiness comes from you. And it, as you say, it wasn't like you were always happy. And I think that perspective thing is a really good one. There's another one, which is about two guys in a prison and they're both painting pictures. And one's painting pictures of the bars and the other one's painting a picture of the house beyond the bars. And yeah. perspective is a really great thing, isn't it? Because sometimes we look at things and go, oh, there's no way to change this. And then you look at other things you can do and it's like, Wow. So perspective, it is in our head how we see things and how we look at the world and how we can change things for the better for ourselves and for other people around us. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, and it's that comparison thing as well. You know, when you realise that comparing yourself to somebody else isn't doing you any favours, you know, yeah. and comparison and jealousy and they're just really negative emotions and when you can change those emotions um it, it just changes the feeling from from inside your tummy do you know it's like yeah. it's an internal feeling yeah definitely I, I mean look that's what i liked about you with your i choose happy because the people you had on as well um i'm trying to think who they were but i remember there was a couple of girls on there i think one was finance and another one i can't remember what she did but they were just so happy. I became friends with them on, on Instagram after hearing your podcast with them. Yeah. Because I thought, wow, these are really interesting people. And we all have different things in our lives that hold us back um, and that we have to work through. You know, I've always told the story and people are probably sick of it, but of getting fibromyalgia when, um, which was the turning point in my life. So I was working five days a week, uh, 13 hour days, uh, and then I got fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. And that was a turning point for me because it gave me the opportunity to go and study counselling, which I'd always wanted to do, because then I could only work part time. Um, and we, I, I guess we have to look for these opportunities of when we can change things, because I think sometimes we can get bogged down with what we're doing for work, um, what we're doing in our personal life, what we're doing with friends. Uh, you know, I mean, you changing your career now, you know, it's amazing. What made you decide to just get out of what you were doing and go and try something completely different? An opportunity came along and somebody 
so Lucy that I'm working with is um is a friend and yeah. we met um through a gym and we were running together and she always said you know when I set up on my own um I'm taking you with me and she she stuck to her word and she's taking me with her and I just again I, I'm a massive believer these days in your gut feeling and my gut told me that this was the right move um yeah. and so that was over six months ago and it's sort of taken over like my life has become so settled. I think that I've stopped, I haven't stopped trying to help other people, but I'm avoid, like, I'm not on social media as much. Yeah. Um, and it's partly because I haven't got the time now. Um, and because I've got something that's really interesting to me. Um, and I'm off back to uni. So I'm. And what are you studying at you uni? Know, audiology. So um, hearing care. Yeah. See, so just before, five minutes ago, you said, um, I thought going to uni, I was too thick. Now you're yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And that's change, the thing. It, it, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, next year I'm 50 and I've got all these things that I want to do before I'm 50. So um, career change wasn't necessarily one of them, but it's, it's happened and it's amazing. Um, and it all started from writing a letter to myself um, in right. the future. For, for my 70-year-old self, how do I want life to be? What do I want, you know, my yeah. grandchildren to remember me as? And, um, yeah, so I suggest to anybody, if, you know, if they want to know what they want to do and they're a bit stuck right now, write two letters. One to yourself when you're 70 and of how you want to see your life has spanned out. Um, yeah. And the other one is of all the things that you want in your life or if you don't know what you want, all the things you don't want in your life. And then you can learn how to eliminate them. Wow. That's great. So you don't have to tell us what you've eliminated, but uh, how many things have you eliminated since you wrote that letter? How many things have you been able to get out of your life that were holding you back? Oh, God, so many, so many. But the main one was living, living by the past and constantly, you know, beating myself up about the past um, and... I want to say what other people think, but clearly that is still an issue because I stopped my podcast because I was worried what other people might think. Yeah. So, but I think it's more about what other people think about my past. I used to worry about that regularly. So, um, you know, I left school with, um, with one GCSE, which was English, thank goodness. Um, because I need that for, for uni. <laughs> um, but I have, you know, I have been back to college and done uni and things like that in my later life. But I left school, got uh, had a baby, got married, got divorced, um, had another baby, got married again. So, you know, like two divorces, two kids, two different dads. It was all like, oh, always feeling judged. But I, yeah, not anymore. But were you actually being judged by anyone or was it just your perception that people were judging you? My perception. Yeah. And we've just talked about those two memes about perception. Yeah, definitely. And, and it, it, it is really hard because when we perceive how people see us, then uh, it does change how we are, doesn't it? And it, it actually, it quietens down our character because we don't want people to think that we're a show off, we're doing too much. We think so much of ourselves and it's not that it's just that you're confident but I think we're taught you know just be quiet just be calm everybody will like you if you're just a normal person and someone else shines you know <laughs> although I always look at it now that when I was at school there was all the people who shined and I didn't I sort of was in the background um, and now when I look at some of those people when I bump into them and I see what jobs and careers they've started I think wow I would have thought you would have been like some mega star and TV personality or, or pop star because you were so out there and yet you're doing something really quiet. I, I don't want to name a, um, a profession because, you know, who knows what people yeah. are. But, you know, I, I turned into someone who was worked on radio, I worked on TV, uh, do a podcast, work in disability, um, had my own fashion label when I was in my 20s, had a music um, mail order business. You know, so I did all these things that, I thought those people would have done. And it was the judgment at first of, oh, should I really go on radio? What will people think? Will they like my voice? And, you know, 
after a little while of being on radio, I was like, well, you know, this is what I want to do. I like playing music. I like chatting to people. Um, and that's why I started the podcast, because I'd already had that sort of initiation into doing radio. Um, but also when we worry about how other people perceive us, it's really draining, isn't it? Because yeah. you're constantly worrying about what people will think of you. Um, and in reality, they've probably got so many things they need to do each day that they don't even have time to think about what we're doing. Absolutely. I just have to what? say hello to Redette because Redette joins the lives every week. And so it's amazing that you're here because I, Redette, are you in, are you in America? Or are you in the UK? I can't remember. See, because usually these are on 8 p.m., which would be your 11 a.m. now. Yeah. 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 So, morning, Rodette. So, yeah, you know, perception oh, does, it, it kills everything, doesn't it? Because you just, well, it can, because we worry that people are going to judge us, how we're going to feel, are we doing the right thing? And it's, yeah, it's not just their judgment. Then we start to judge ourselves and doubt ourselves and think, am I good enough? Like you were saying with your podcast, you started to think, am I good enough? Do people really want to listen to me? You know, and you had some really great guests on who had great stories and you were really yeah. good at picking out the questions that were right for what they were. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, and one of the things is uh, in October, I had a day that was lined up um, for some fabulous guests, for some people that I never thought I'd ever, like, get the chance to, to interview and chat to. Um, and when I messaged and they came back and said that they'd love to talk to me, it was, it was brilliant. But then something happened which meant that I had to cancel the day and I just never picked it back up. So, now, Rodette yeah. is just saying that you're doing so well, you're so confident. Oh, thank you, Rodette. There That's you lovely. Go. Thank you. Oh, I think I'm and blushing you do now. Look so <laughs> confident, confident, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, you know, a couple of months down the track or when you've finished um, your uni, it's something you should pick up, even if you do one a month. Because your stories, yeah. the, the stories of the people you find are important and they're really good stories. And, and I like yeah. listening to you. It was good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca's um, name is Trisha. Hello, Trisha. Oh. Um, so I think it started off as well where um, obviously part of being happy for me, I found, was the gratitude. So I wanted to hold myself accountable. Um, and this is <laughs> this is, again, something like... I did it for about 47 days and then, I, you know, and then it stopped because I felt like my, I was too busy or, um, and actually, yeah, I might just pick it up again. Anyway, so um, I was doing 10 gratitudes every day, but 10 different gratitudes. Um, yeah. And it's amazing, like, when you sit down and really think about things, um, oh God, it only takes about a week of doing it and... And everything just seems so much better. Yeah. Um, and that's what I was trying to get across to people, you know. And that's, that's my outlook every day is what can I do to have a good day? And what can I do to make someone else's day better, you know, without any, without a lot of effort? Because I don't want it to be forced. I want to be able to just do it. And you don't have to do gratitude on major things, do you? I mean, I did a podcast with a uh, actress from Neighbours and um, Wentworth. And yeah. part of what she said was, she said, you know, some days I'm grateful that I've got fresh undies in my drawer or that I could go and have a coffee or, you know, lockdown had finished. She said, so I don't sit there and think, oh, my God, what can I be grateful for? I just pick a few things each night before I go to bed. And she said, when I wake up the next morning, I feel more grateful again because I've just made a few things that I thought, yeah, I'm grateful for those things. So yeah. it, it's quite easy to do, isn't it? it yeah, sometimes, it, you know, in the very beginning, it can feel hard, but there's lots of platforms out there that you can look at and get ideas from. But it is just about, you know, being grateful for the fresh air, being grateful that you've woke up that morning and some things, you know, it's, yeah. Um, I, I always remember being grateful for a tea bag and it was genuine, genuine gratitude that I felt because... 
um do you, do you know like some days when you wake up and you're just gasping and I didn't have yeah. any tea bags and one of the doctors that I worked with at the time brought me you know brought me a cup of tea and it was because she'd heard me say that I was gasping and there was no tea bags well she went up stairs to another kitchen and, and brought me a cup of tea you know so that was wow. just, that was really lovely yeah so I think yeah yeah there's there's lots of things we can be grateful for and Actually, right now, now you're saying that during lockdown uh, a friend of mine went round to everybody's house that she knew friends I think it was about 15 people who lived in the five kilometer radius because we were locked into five kilometers and she yeah. gave them a tea bag and a, a fun size bar of chocolate in an envelope and just said, hope you're keeping well. This is just so we can all have a cup of tea and it will say 10 a.m. the next day. And then she knew that all her friends were having a cup of tea with her at the same time and they were all so grateful that that had happened. Yeah, things like that, it's lovely. Um, I remember, um, I like doing um, sometimes a bit childish things. As, um, so I bought everybody a box of bubbles, you know, yep. the your blowing bubbles, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just things to try and, you know, build morale, make people happy, just things like that. It just, yeah, it makes, my life is so much better now because of it. And I think once I changed my attitude um, and turned it into thinking positive, um, acting positive and putting that out there, it comes back, you attract it back. And it's, I do believe in the law of attraction and I do believe in vibrations and things like that. I don't 100% know everything about them, but I believe in them because it's worked for me. Yeah. Definitely the vibrations. So how does a vibration work? Because I've often said um, to people, I don't understand the um, putting it out to the universe and then waiting for stuff to come back how does that work ah uh, you see i'm still waiting on that one um, okay. but <laughs> i say i'm still waiting on it but 18 months ago i wrote and I'm, I'm big on writing letters now journaling okay so yeah. 18 months ago i wrote a letter and i wanted a bigger house i wanted more money um from my input and i remember this some things that i specifically wrote um, and some things I just wrote because I, I didn't really know what I want. Um, and that's part of wanting a bigger house. Do I actually want a bigger house because I want one or just because it's what other people have got, to, you know? Um, yeah. So, um, so that the and imagine house all the cleaning. Exactly. Yeah. I don't really want that, but okay. I'd like to be able to afford a cleaner because then I'll be, you know, um, employing somebody and sharing that wealth with somebody else is the way that I'm yeah. thinking. But, um, so the bigger house hasn't happened yet. So I don't think the universe really wants me to have that. But financially, I wrote on paper, you know, I would really like to increase my income by £500, which is a lot of money. And at that time, as a HCA, it was just like, this is never going to happen unless I work loads of extra shifts. And um, I did do a lot of extra overtime at the COVID clinics when we needed to do the injections and things. Um, but now it, it's happened to me this week that I actually sat and I was like, oh, my God. My income has just gone to an extra £500 a month. Wow. Yeah. So it does work. So, so I do, but I do think it does work. But it's it's taken eighteen months for that to for that to happen. And when I say about the vibration, it's so when I was miserable and um, and I, and I wasn't a very nice person, I'd find it quite easy to sit and gossip. Um, which that's you know, it, I'm not proud of it, but it's something that yeah, if if we were sitting and we were getting on somebody and you know pulling somebody else down. I could I could sit and do that and and actually it's you go home and and you're sad and yeah so when I you're think thinking sad it, and you part, talk sad it, it's part of um, being in that group situation isn't it and yeah. even though you're not that sort of person you find that you just slowly feed into what they're saying and then you say the same things and you know really with gossip. Um, I guess it can be fun at the time, but then when you get home, as you're saying, then you start thinking, well, I didn't really mean that about that person. And 
I shouldn't have really said that. And then you start mm -hmm. doubting what you said because you were just part of the group. Yeah, yeah. But also then you, you're not, like when you're, when you're happy and when you're not talking like that, people want to be around you. When, you're, when you are like that, nobody wants to be around you. Um, and there was days when I didn't want to be around me. Um, but now, you know, it's, it's, it's quite easy to smile and that makes, you know, I, I like smiling. It makes That's me good. feel good. Um, and I've got, yeah, I've got genuine friends, you know, it's, it is so different. And so the vibration of happiness, I, I then attract happy people. You do. And, and look, yeah. you can just see how happy you are. I mean, I'm not saying the last time we spoke, you weren't happy, but it shines through. And you find that most of those people who are those gossipy people actually don't like themselves. So that's yeah. why they're gossiping, because it's easier to put someone else down to make them feel better. And yeah, you've you're projecting. That. Yeah, and you've moved away from that. And look how happy you've become and how confident oh, God, you yeah. are. It, yeah. it's, it's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I never want to go back there. No, never. and look, you know, I mean, I, I guess the last couple of years, we were all sort of in that stress of COVID and lockdown and stuff like that. So it's bound to happen. Um, but now that you're coming out of it and you're feeling better, I think my um, phone is going to start falling down. Um, I think, <laughs> you, you know, you've become more confident because you are getting out again and you can see... Well, you can see what you're achieving. I mean, you've changed careers. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's been ongoing. I've been trying to change my life for about 49 years. <laughs> but actually, when I, you know, sort of like in my, four, in my 40s, I've really sort of grasped onto what's important and what's not important. I've been through that uh, materialistic phase of thinking that things can make me happy you know, um, my story spreads from, you know, three different husbands, two children to two different fathers. My third husband is lovely, actually. And I've told him it's illegal for us to get divorced um, because I can't get divorced three times. <laughs> okay. um, um, but yeah, um, and, you know, part of that unhappiness, I got into a lot of debt, which, you know, I'm now towards the end of. Um, so being unhappy, just it, it just has a massive impact on, on the whole of your life, not just on your feelings and your emotions. So it just spread out to, I, the, you know, buying things that I didn't need and thought that would make me happy. But I used to blame everybody else for me not being happy and for not making me happy and nobody else is going to do that for you and it's a really hard thing to grasp but once you once you've got it then you don't need anyone else to make you happy no and look I agree with you 100% because you know I worked my job throughout my life I went to parties I enjoyed a great social life I spent lots of money on things I didn't really need and it was only in the last probably five years um, well, since I did my diploma, so say 12 years, and then starting my own business and um, starting the podcast, you realise all the different things that are important and the things that aren't important. Um, it's not really a waste because it's growth, isn't it? You grow through that stuff. And then you realise, actually, I'm in this position now and I'm quite happy where I am. Yeah. Yeah. So if a lot of that stuff hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am today and grateful and changing the way that I think. Um, so there is that. But yeah, you, you can, yeah. I just think that we can stay or we can evolve and grow. Yeah, definitely. And look, you've evolved and grown. It's been great. Uh, I hope to see you back with I Choose Happy podcast soon. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. This has given me a bit of a bit of a you know. Let's do it. Let's get back there because it just reminds me of what I like to do. Yeah, I mean, look, you should actually probably be a guest on the podcast and we can talk about all this stuff and that will also give you another oomph to, yes, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're, as I said, you're great at talking to people. You come up with some really good, interesting questions. And so I think, uh, look, it's up to you. 
but you're going really well in life now. And I think uh, that will be the icing on the cake for you to conquer it again, because you had a bit of fear about what you were doing. Was it right? Um, and I think even if you put out another two or three, that will make you go, actually, I can still do this. And I am confident. Yeah. Look how confident oh, you've been today. Thank you, Daniel. Oh, wow. thank you. We That's, podcasters I... need to stick together. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Thank you. You're a star. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, um, look, we wanted to, look, my thing is falling apart. So, and we wanted to make it a quick one at this time because you've got to get out and walk your dog. I've got to get yep. around to see my mum um, and I've just finished work. So you can go back, they can go back and still listen to I Choose Happy, can't they, podcasts? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's still uh, just, yeah, on Apple, Spotify, all of them, just put in I Choose Happy. You'll get a big yellow square and it's all there. And if you want to listen to my podcast, it's Life Changes You. It's on Spotify, Apple, everywhere you can go. And if, uh, well, people are already following me on Instagram because they can see us talking here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining me, Emma. We wanted to make it quick. Is that quick enough for you? That's lovely. Thank you so much for having me, Daniel. You it are amazing. It was such a great chat. It was good. Yeah. Look, how much positivity came from you. And when I did the update yesterday, I thought, what am I going to put? So I put Emma uh, Flint, I choose happy, positive person. Thank you. Because you are. Yeah. Yeah, so I spread am. Your, yeah. So spread your positivity around and let's get you on a podcast soon. And then people can go and listen to a more in-depth uh, chat. And we'll talk for about 45 minutes to an hour and we'll cover lots of different things. Fabulous. Excellent. That sounds like a good plan. Well, you All have right, a great we... day. Well, a great evening. Yes. Okay. Evening we'll now. catch up soon. soon. No worries. Yeah. You take care. Thank you, everybody, Bye. for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.